Hello and welcome guys. Today's video is about how to create a web API with ASP.NET Core and Visual Studio. This is the part of a two part series of tutorials and the first part we will see that you will be able to understand the design of the app with its architecture, create a web API project for listing to do items using ASP.NET Core and Visual Studio, create and register the database context, add an API controller, get to do items, learn about routing and URL paths, learn about return values. Now this tutorial doesn't create a client. So Postman is another client software, third party software, which is used as client to test the app. So the overview of this tutorial is that it is given in a tabular form. So the API in the get HTTP verbs. So this is the URL for the get description, get all to do items, request body none and array of to do item it returns. Similarly, API slash to do slash with an ID, get an item by ID and it has the response body is to do item. So the architecture of the app is like this. There's a client. Client sends the HTTP request to the MVC app and it goes to the controller. Controller gives back an HTTP response and in between the controller has got two-way communication with the data access layer which is basically the model, the classes within that model folder and it reads uh, the data from the um, data access layer and sends it back to the as a response and this model is you know giving back a serialized data in the form of uh, json returned data so the client is whatever that consumes the web api mobile app browser etc this tutorial doesn't create a client so again postman is used as the client to test the app a model is an object that represents the data in the app in this case the only model is a to do item models are represented as c sharp classes known as plain old clr objects or pocos a controller is an object that handles http requests and creates the http response this app has a single controller now we haven't used any database to keep the uh, lesson simple and the prerequisites are these now, when the app is launched in the Chrome, Microsoft and Firefox, we'll display the following out. Actually, look into the project and create the project by clicking on File, New, Project. And when the new project dialog starts, we'll create file. Uh, the web is already highlighted, ASP.NET Core web application. And... I'll name the project to do API. To do API. Create a directory for the solution. Click on OK. It's creating the project. So I'll click on OK on this dialog and it creates the project for me and I'll run this, launch this application with control F5 and there we are, we see this output value 1, value 2. Now we'll add a model class. So for adding a model class We'll click on highlight to do API project click on add and click on new folder and name this folder models right in this models folder I'll create a class and name it to do item so add class I'll name it to do item and 
and I will copy the code from my clipboard and complete my to do item class. Now the database generates the ID when to do item is created. Now next we will create the database context. The database context is the main class that coordinates entity framework functionality for a given data model. This class is created by deriving from the microsoft.entityframework.core.dbcontext class. So I will create another class, the data context class, add class and name this class as to do context. I will use this namespace I'll just copy it over my to do context class next I will register the database context in this step the database context is registered with the dependency injection container Services such as the DB context that are registered with the dependency injection container are available to controllers. I will register the DB context with service container using the built-in support for de dependency injection. So what I will do is I will click on the startup file and just highlight my existing code and copy it over with the code that I have on my notepad. So here we see that we have we are using entity framework core and we are also importing to do api.models and i have added database context and use in memory database now in this code it specifies an in memory database that is injected into the services service container Next, we'll go and add a controller. Controllers add controller. So add new item, rather new item. And then web ASP.NET API controller class and make this as to do controller. and then copy over the code in the in pending controller with the code that I have already copied. So this is the controller. In this controller, it defines an API controller class and it doesn't have any method, only one constructor and it creates a new to-do item when to-do items is empty. When to-do items is empty, it creates a new to-do item. You won't be able to delete all the to-do items because the constructor creates a new one if to-do items is empty. Now in the next section, methods are added to implement the API. The class is annotated with API controller to enable some convenient features. Now controllers constructor uses dependency injection to inject the database context, the to-do context, that is the database context, into the controller. The database context is used in each of the CRUD methods in the controller. So, in we are going to restrict this tutorial to only the get part of it and we will do the rest of the CRUD operations, put post and delete in the next tutorial. So, to get uh, to-do items, we will add the following to the to do controller class so below the constructor i had pasted the code now and these methods implement two get methods so and these get methods are api slash to do 
and API slash to do with an ID, get by ID. So get all and get by ID. And the sample response to the get all method we will see soon when we use Postman. And for the HTTP get attribute, this denotes a method that responds to a get request. HTTP get request. The URL path for each method is constructed as follows. So this is the URL. Now replace controller with the name of the controller which is the controller class name minus the controller suffix. For this sample the controller class name is to do controller and the root name is to do. ASP.NET Core routing is case sensitive. If HTTP get attribute has a root template such as HTTP get slash within quotes products append that to the path. This sample doesn't use a template form. Okay. Now in the following get by ID, ID is a placeholder variable for the unique identifier of the to do item ID. When get by ID is invoked, it assigns the value of ID in the URL to the methods ID parameter. Methods ID parameter. Okay. So name equals get to do that one. Now, name roots enable the app to create an HTTP link using the route name and it will be explained later in the tutorial. Now, there are something about the return values. The get all method, this get all method returns a collection of to do items and MVC automatically serializes the object to JSON and writes the JSON into the body of the response message. The response code for this method is 200 assuming there are no unhandled exceptions. In contrast, the get by ID method, this one, it returns an action result. It returns an action result of a particular type, this is to do item, which represents a wide range of return types. Now, get by ID has two different return types. If no item matches the requested ID, the method returns a 404 error, not found. Returning not found returns an HTTP 404 response. And otherwise, the method returns 200 with a JSON response body returning item results in an HTTP 200 response. So 404 for not found and if something is found, it returns the item with an HTTP 200 response. Now next we'll launch this application and we get this one. So thank you. In the next part of the tutorial, we will see create, update and delete methods how we do that and the, how we use postman thanks for watching if you like the video please you know put your comments likes and subscribe to my channel thank you very much